Love is a many splendid thing. Love lifts us up where we belong. All you need is love. It would be virtually impossible for us to determine the number of love songs that have been written across the years. By the time we had counted them all, the number would be obsolete. Endless love, how deep is your love? I will always love you. But according to songwriters, love is still the one topic that never goes out of fashion. It's always with us. It always matters. And no matter when a love song was written, the love that's expressed in it is relevant and relatable. And the same can be said for films. Filmmakers have always recognised that love stories are relatable. Hugh Grant's classic rom-coms sell really well. And some of the greatest Christmas movies focus on the theme of love. Top of the list for many people at Christmas is Love Actually with Hugh Grant, Alan Rickman, Emma Thompson and Kira Knightley. A film which weaves in and out of the complications of human love. But the film opens with a voiceover which reminds us that love can often be found in the most unusual of places. And it says this. Whenever I get gloomy with the state of the world, I think about the arrivals gate at Heathrow Airport. General opinion is starting to make out that we live in a world of hatred and greed. But I don't see that. It seems to me that love is everywhere. Often it's not particularly dignified or newsworthy, but it's always there. Fathers and sons, mothers and daughters, husbands and wives, boyfriends, girlfriends, old friends. If you look for it, I've got a sneaky feeling you'll find that love actually is all around. If you look for it, love actually is all around. But as Christians, we believe that God is love. And we are told in St Paul's letter to the Corinthians that faith, hope and love are so very important. But the greatest of these is love. And it's this story of love that we celebrate at Christmas. At Christmas time, we bear witness to the love found in unusual places. We bear witness to the love found in unusual circumstances. And we bear witness to the love depicted in the unusual circumstances and unusual location of our crib scene as we think of Jesus laying in a manger. The love depicted is the love of a mother as she cares for her newborn baby, born in the most unusual of circumstances. The love depicted is the love of the visitors, the shepherds and the magi bearing gifts. And the love of God, who sent his son to be born as one of us, so that we may be reconciled to God and restored to our intended place as his beloved children. God's great plan, enacted to lift humanity back up to the place where we belong. Love, lifting us up to where we belong. Well, the media and our social media culture often portrays love as something which has to be extravagant and complicated. But genuine love can often be the simplest of things. Well, I recently found an article which documented the ways in which children describe the simplicity of love. And one of them said that love is what makes you smile when you're tired and grouchy. Love is what makes you smile when you're tired and grouchy. And so I wonder what makes you smile when you get tired and grouchy? What makes you smile when you're fed up? Well, the chances are it's probably something quite simple. Love doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be newsworthy. It doesn't have to be in your face. We don't need extravagance to show love. And in the same way, Christmas doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be perfect in the way that the media often make us believe that it has to be. We don't need the most expensive gifts to show that we love someone. We don't need the biggest, juiciest turkey or even the prettiest of decorations to make our Christmas picture perfect. All we need for the perfect Christmas is love. Love which has already been shown through the birth of Jesus 
our saviour. All you need is that love. The first Christmas certainly wasn't perfect. It wasn't perfect in the eyes of society or through the eyes of culture with a young and married woman and a manger for the newborn baby's bed. The birth of our saviour was far from picture perfect and it was far from Facebook perfect. But what made it perfect in the sight of God was love. The love of God who sent Jesus to redeem the world. The love of Mary to hold Jesus, to nurse Jesus and perhaps to sing him to sleep. The love of Joseph's presence and the love shown through the giving of simple gifts from the shepherds. The shepherds didn't go out of their way to buy anything special. They gave what they had to give. And as Christ Christian people, we are called to do the same. There are some beautiful poems written by Christina Rossetti, and some of these have become Christmas carols. The first is Love Came Down at Christmas, and the, the lyrics of this are beautiful. It says, Love came down at Christmas, love all lovely, love divine. Love was born at Christmas, star and angel gave the sign. Love shall be our token, love be yours and love be mine. Love to God and all the world, love for plea and gift and sign. We all have love within us, we all have love to give and we all receive love in various ways. And as Christian people, we are called to share that love. Another of Rossetti's poems is in the bleak midwinter. And the final verse says, what can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet what I can, I give him, give my heart. Christmas is most truly Christmas when we celebrate it by giving the light of love to those who need it most. As Christians, it's essential that we recognise the gift of love given to us all on that first Christmas day. And when we show love to others, we recognise that perfect love is always a copy of the love God has already shown us. Real love is never complete until, like God, we give it away. A bell's not a bell till you ring it. A song's not a song until you sing it. And love in your heart wasn't put there to stay. Love isn't love till you give it away. Some lyrics there from Oscar Hammerstein. Real love begins with God and it began in a stable in Bethlehem. Real love begins with God and real love ends with God. Love is what God uses to connect with humankind. What is depicted in the stable at Bethlehem is the way in which God showed his love among us. He sent his only son that we might have light and life. But it's not always easy and especially in difficult circumstances and the circumstances of this Christmas are very difficult for so many people. There are people missing from our Christmas dinner tables for a number of reasons. And so I recognise that it's not always easy, especially during the difficult times in our lives, for us to see that love. When the pressure to have a perfect Christmas is intensified by social media, advertisements, and the growing expectations of those around us year on year, Christmas can become a difficult time for many people, even under normal circumstances. And this year, for many people, there is a lot of pressure. There's a lot of upset. There's a lot of uncertainty. And the cracks in our lives, which we usually manage just fine, can become distorted and present themselves as gaping holes as the stresses of our lives become intensified. But as we turn our eyes back to that simple scene at Bethlehem, we see a mirror of all the uncertainties, the stresses and the strains of our own lives, all of which are held together 
by God's embrace through the presence of God in the form of a helpless baby in a manger. Through a recognition of that love, our faith motivates us to move forward even when the odds seem stacked against us. Hope keeps us moving forward and fuels us to face what sometimes feels like the impossible challenges in life. And these gifts of faith and hope are made possible through an awareness and through an, an acceptance of God's love. Faith, hope and love remain. Yes, sometimes it can be difficult to love, even as Christians, and even at Christmas. And sometimes it can be difficult to allow ourselves to be loved. But today, as we celebrate the birth of Jesus, we do also celebrate the gift of love. Love given and love received, love incarnate and love divine. Today, we celebrate that first Christmas when the world was invited to become part of God's family through a perfect imperfection. We remember that Jesus is our brother, our friend, our saviour and our God. And we also remember that we are all children of God and that we, that we all have the capacity to love and be loved. Love is many a splendid thing. Love does lift us up where we belong. But that love doesn't need to be complicated because God has already taken care of the complicated bit. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. All you need is God's love. And thanks be to God we have received that love through the birth of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Saviour, the Prince of Peace. The love that came down at Christmas, love all lovely, love divine, is all around us. Love actually is all around. And what you do with an awareness of that love this Christmas and in the days, weeks and months ahead is down to you. And so we pray. Almighty God, your word brings everything into being and in your grace we are adopted as your children. Your loving kindness brings joy and gladness to the frightened and anxious. And so we pray that you will hold in your tender compassion all who are troubled in any way at this time. May the good news of the birth of Jesus fill us all with your light and truth. And we pray, Lord, that you shine your light on all who walk in darkness, and for any for whom this season heightens their distress. We pray for those separated from loved ones, and we ask that you make your presence known to them. Amen. And so it is my hope and my prayer that the joy of the angels, the humility of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the Christ child may be God's gift to us all this Christmas. Amen. Mm -hmm.